Hey guys, it's AJYT Ava here, and welcome to my review for The Batman. Um, I'm gonna keep this fairly short, probably like, you know, 10 minutes or so, um, just to give my general thoughts on the film. I'm not gonna break it down piece by piece, but if you have not seen The Batman yet, this review will contain spoilers because I'm gonna go very in depth into my thoughts on the film, the characters, the, the story. The, the way it moves, just the way it feels, everything. So, yeah. Okay, spoilers. Um, this movie is amazing. So, we kick off this movie clearly setting the stage for what is going to be a very dark film. This is, make no mistake, this is not for the kids. This movie is not for kids. You can... You could watch this with your kid, I guess, if they're a pretty big Batman fan. But this movie carries a very noir-type feel. A very heavy, dark, um, emotionally-driven crime drama. And I really love that. So, the way the story goes is the Riddler has been committing these various crimes, murdering people. Um, he murders several important figures in the police and just politicians, a guy running for... Uh, just, he, he's going across his victims basically by importance and also the ones that uh, are not being that... So the story goes like this. The Riddler is taking out various targets that he feels are just not doing enough for this city. He feels like an outcast. We'll get into it later on. But Paul Dano... Dano? Dano? I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. Um, his performance as the Riddler is fantastic. And this is a very dark Riddler, make no mistake. The Jim Carrey Riddler and this Riddler, very different. Um, they got inspiration from the Zodiac Killer for this Riddler, so it makes sense how dark he truly is. As well as the fact that the way he kills people is literally like out of a Saw movie. <laughs> it gets really insane. He even he has rats feed on this one cop, and he gets his face all eaten up by rats. It's not a very gory film. The thing about this movie is that it feels like it wants to be rated R, but it's not fully committing to it. That's just one of the very tiny, tiny nitpicks. It, feel like, it feels like it could have been R, but it's not. It drops one F-bomb at the beginning, and the worst gore stuff you get is the rat stuff and a severed thumb. That's about the worst gore you get in this film. Um, I shouldn't say worst. The, the most bloody uh, stuff that you get in this film. Everything else is very standard, um, although I shouldn't say standard, it's, it's very good. The action is fantastic, there is a chase scene, of, of course I'm sure you've seen from the trailer between Batman and the Penguin, played by Colin Farrell, who did fantastic. I can't wait for the Penguin HBO Max series that they're doing, because Colin Farrell very much carries a, a very comedic yet very crime boss like sort of like the mob type uh like he's a mobster pretty much it's mobster penguin which i mean penguin carried some of that those traits already but this is a really cool um rendition and and you know portrayal of penguin he's very charismatic yet he will get pissed off pretty easily uh but the chase scene between him and batman one of my favorite parts of the whole movie that is epic the batmobile is so sick in this movie it looks amazing and i saw this in rpx so i got to feel the i i just got to feel it i got to feel the the batmobile just sort of zoom you know <laughs> uh, which sounds you know dumb just saying like zoom like a toy car but no this was epic this was this whole movie is just epic Robert Pattinson, amazing as Batman. 
Um, he played it exactly like I thought he would, and exactly how I wanted him to, which is a very detached Batman. This is a very emotionally distant Batman um, and Bruce Wayne, which um, one of the nitpicks of the film uh, for a lot of people is that it didn't have a lot of Bruce Wayne. It was more of a Batman film than a Bruce Wayne film, which I honestly kind of credit the director for that because you get to see that there's kind of no blur, there's no there's no divide, really, between Bruce and Batman. They are both equally damaged people emotionally. Batman has to be emotionally damaged because he needs to be threatening to people, and we get the sense right off the bat that he is very, very threatening to people. We get to see, um, you know, crime out on the streets and how... You know, they'll hear a noise, or they'll look over in the shadows, and they'll think the Batman is there, and hey, they will get scared. Uh, one of the various themes throughout the film is if Batman is even making a difference, if he even is changing the the Gotham, you know, dynamic, which Gotham is a shitty place to live. They make a huge point of that right off the bat. We see crime everywhere, we see death and and controversy and po political you know scandals and all these cover-ups involving the waynes and the Falcone and the penguin of course and you have the riddler intertwined with all of it messing with it and revealing these big deep dark secrets while also forming his own pretty much cult following he right off the bat we get at the beginning of the film he kills the mayor of Gotham City, and he hits him over the head with like a ch like a chisel thing that they use uh, for carpentry. One of the even more threatening things about his character is that later on we get to see him be arrested, and he's a very normal looking dude. Um, he's he looks thick and harmless. He's very nerdy. He has the glasses, and he's he's just he carries himself in a very nerdy way. Like he sees Batman show up to where he's being arrested. And he just gets this big grin on his face like he's finally getting the attention he wanted. And that's the big thing about the Riddler. He wants the attention here. He wants to cause havoc and chaos because he needs the attention. He wants the people of Gotham to fear him and to see him like he feels like he wasn't seen back when Thomas Wayne. He talks about how Thomas Wayne was announcing all these big changes that were coming to Gotham and... None of those changes ever really happened. None of them ever came to pass. So, like I said, he's built this cult following, which Bruce has to fight at the end of the film, towards the end. This is a very long movie. You you honestly, I, I didn't feel the runtime. I already knew what the runtime was, so I can't feel it. I literally told myself, I was like, this is a three hour long movie. You need to put yourself in it, you need to be immersed, and you need to enjoy it. And that is exactly what I did. Trust me, if I was not liking this movie, I would have felt that three hours. But I was fully immersed, I was enjoying it 24-7. The whole nine yards, all three hours, nearly three hours. I was fully engaged. This is only two years into Bruce's career as Batman. Whereas Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, of course, all those other renditions, Christian Bale, sorry, um, they they've been at bat at the Batman gig for for years and years. Whereas Pattinson, of course, he has only been Batman. Um, his character has only been Batman for two years. And what I really love about the film is that at the beginning of the film, the Batman is a symbol of fear and vengeance. He says it. You've heard it in the trailer. Every TV spot known to man, he has said it. I am vengeance. So, he starts off as a symbol of vengeance, but towards the end of the film, he ends up actually being a symbol of hope to the city. And I love that. I love that transition because it shows the character growth of Batman, the the effort that he has put into this city, even though towards the end he is still like, I'm not sure if this is going to make a difference. But he's like, I have to try. Catwoman, Zoe Kravitz. Hands down, the best 
Batman Catwoman dynamic since uh, Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer in the original Batman film from Tim Burton. This is a very grounded, well rounded relationship that we have here. Honestly, one of the best on screen chemistries I've seen in any of the recent DC works. Um, Zoe Kravitz and Robert Pattinson, they carry their performances expertly. I, I, I thought Catwoman is a very complex character. I feel like she's the only person in this film that Batman kind of at least opens up to slightly. Because I feel like he understands her. They understand each other. And Bat one of Batman's whole things is that he doesn't feel... He doesn't feel like he's being accepted or that his work is paying off for the citizens of Gotham. But he has to do it. At the beginning, he's doing it for vengeance. By the end, he realizes, I can really do some good here for these people. This city is grounded in crime and drama and just death and shady shit and cover-ups galore. This is my chance to do something that my father couldn't. Huge controversy over the Waynes. He, uh, Thomas Wayne had um, people killed for him. And it's hard for Bruce to really struggle with that. Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon, also really, really good performance there. Um, yeah, honestly, I could go on this movie, I could go on about this movie all day, but I am kind of trying to keep this review short. So I think that's where I'll end it here, but I'm probably going to do another video giving my thoughts on it still, um, because there is a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about with this movie. And yeah, let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments below. Um, leave a like and subscribe for more Batman, Walking Dead, just fucking everything. We do a lot of stuff on this channel, a lot of weird shit. <laughs> uh, take care, guys. Goodbye.